Good day girls. Welcome to our third lesson on moments of a force. In today's lesson, we'll be learning how to solve problems involving two pivots. So let's continue. In this problem, let's say we have a uniform plank that is supported by two pivots at points X and Y. In between X and Y, we have two objects a and B with weights of 500 newtons and 400 newtons respectively. The weight of the plank itself is 100 newtons. We know the distance from X to A is 0.3 meters. From A to the center of gravity of the pivot is 0.2 meters. From the center of gravity of the plank to point B is 0.4 meters. And from point B to point Y is 0.1 meters. How do we then determine these reaction forces R sub X and R sub Y? Well, we will use the principle of moments, of course. But whenever we have a problem where there are two pivots, we have to then choose which pivot we want to take moments about. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you were to push this plank up from here, it would then rotate about point Y. If you were to push it here, on the right hand side instead, it would rotate about point X. Since there are two possible rotation points, two pivots, we have to consider the moments about one pivot. So when you solve this, the choice is yours. If you want, you could choose to consider moments about point X or point Y. Here, I have chosen to consider moments about the pivot Y. So next step would then be to identify our givens. So if I'm considering moments about pivot Y, I have to first find the clockwise moments. So if this is my pivot point, the turning point, will A, B, or the weight of the plank cause it to rotate clockwise? No. Since those are to the left of point Y and they are acting downwards, those would then be an anti-clockwise pivot. X is pushing upwards and it is to the left of pivot Y. So that will cause a clockwise rotation. So when I look at my clockwise moments, my first force that I have here is our unknown reactionary force R sub X. The distance from pivot X to pivot Y is one meter, which is the sum of all of these distances here. How far is X to Y? It is not 0.3 meters. It is not 0.2 individually. It is not any of those individual distances. It is the distance all the way from X to Y, which is the sum of all of those. Then there are no more clockwise moments to consider. We now have only anti-clockwise moments. So let's continue from left to right. Our next force, the second force, is 500 newtons. How far is that point A from point Y? It is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.7 meters. How far is the third force, which is 100 newtons? It is 0 0.5 meters, which again is the sum of 0 0.4 and 0 0.1. And our fourth and final force to consider is 400 newtons. How far is that point B from point Y? It is simply 0 0.1 meters. We do not need to add or subtract anything here. It is simply that distance 0 0.1. Next, you might be saying, but what about this other reactionary force, R sub Y? Why isn't that listed? Well, the reason why that is not listed is because what is the distance from R sub Y to point Y? The distance is zero. So, if we were to list it amongst our forces here, if we were to multiply, we would multiply times zero. And what is any number times zero? It is zero. So it is not necessary to list R sub Y. Another reason why we don't list R sub Y is because since R sub Y is directly in line with point Y, with pivot Y, it does not cause a moment or a force turning it either way, clockwise or anticlockwise, with respect to point Y. Okay? So we have our formula. F1 D1 is equal to F2 D2 plus F3 D3 plus F4 D4, right? 
This is the sum of all the clockwise moments. And here, this is the sum of all the anti-clockwise moments. When we substitute our values, we'll have r sub x times 1 meter is equal to 500 newtons times 0 0.7 meters plus 100 newtons times 0 0.5 meters plus 400 newtons times 0 0.1 meters. Simplifying these, we'll get 350 newton meters plus 50 newton meters plus 40 newton meters. That adds up to 440 newton meters. We will then divide that by 1 meter. And in this particular case, dividing by one just gives us 440 newtons that is just a coincidence here of course it will not always be that you divide by one that is only a coincidence here in other instances it will be some other number next how do we find the reaction force at point y r sub y well we could do it two ways we could repeat this process here by considering moments about pivot x and then go through these steps here again or we could do it a rather simpler way. How do we do it a rather simpler way? Well, let's first recall that according to Isaac Newton, for every action force is an equal and opposite reaction force, right? And if things are in equilibrium, those action and reaction forces, they cancel each other out, they are in balance. So since our plank here is balanced, then the Downward forces and the upward forces must be equal to each other. Please note I am talking about the forces, not the moments. Alright? So here we have three downward forces and two upward forces. So another principle of moments that we could write is that the sum of the upward forces is equal to the sum of the downward forces. So what are our upward forces? Rx and Ry. What are our downward forces, F2, F3, and F4. Substituting, we'll have that 440 newtons plus R sub Y is equal to 500 newtons plus 100 newtons plus 400 newtons. 500, 100, and 400 adds up to 1,000. Transposing that 440 newtons, we subtract it from 1,000 and we get 560 newtons. And like I said, if you were to find the value of R sub Y by considering moments about pivot, x following these steps here you will get the same answer as 560 newtons i want to leave it to you to practice on that okay what i mean is your extra practice problem is to find for this example here the value of r sub y by considering moments about pivot x okay so now we come to another part of this question let's say we ask a sort of different scenario how far past point y can the 400 newton object be placed just before the plank starts to tip so in this scenario here now the object b is no longer here in between points x and y we have now taken it and removed it and put it to the right of point y so it is somewhere here we don't know how far it is we want to know how far it can go just before this plank will start to tip over right the further and further we place object b towards the right of point y then its turning effect will become greater and greater depending on how far we place it its turning effect will not overcome the turning effect of these two right on the right hand side of point y object b has a clockwise turning effect on the left hand side these are anti-clockwise and they will be in equilibrium, they will balance out, but not if we take point B past a certain point. If we put it too far, then it will cause it to tip over like that, right? So exactly how far can we place object B before that starts to happen? So if we were to think about this, if we consider the exact point where it starts to tip over, right? Then that means the plank will no longer be in contact with pivot x. So if it is no longer in contact with pivot x, then this reaction force R sub x is no more. Because remember, that is a normal reaction force. It is a contact force. So if it tips and it's no longer in contact with that, then we do not have to consider R sub x anymore. So next, we just have these three forces. 
if this is now our only pivot, again, R sub Y is zero distance away from pivot Y, we do not have to consider it as well. So we only need to look at our clockwise moments and our anti-clockwise moments. So clockwise, we have the first force of 400 newtons and its distance is unknown, X. Anti-clockwise, 100 newtons is 0 0.5 meters away. The third force, 500 newtons, is 0 0.7 meters away. So we write our formula, we substitute, and we work it out. So 100 times 0 0.5 is 50, so that is 50 newton meters. 500 times 0 0.7 again is 350, so that's 350 newton meters. 50 plus 350 gives us 400. So that is 400 newton meters. We transpose this 400 newtons, and when we divide by that, the newtons cancel out, and I am left with one meter. So that means that I can take object B and put it as far up to one meter away on the right hand side of object of pivot Y, and it will be in balance. The instant I put it right at one meter or anything further, then it will tip over. So this is the limit. Anything less than one meter and it will still balance. Right at one meter mark, anything more, then it will tip over.